Hello and welcome to this edition of a page from history. I am Nilanjan Mukhopadhyay. It is often said that literature is the mirror to society. And when, when one gets an appropriate occasion, it is always apt to go back into society using literature as a tool. This is the birth centenary year of the Hindi writer Bhishma Sahani. He wrote short stories, novels and plays. He even acted in films. In a remarkable span of half a century before his death 12 years ago, he played a key role in influencing the tone and tenor of Hindi literature. Bhishma Sahani was most famous for his novel and television screenplay Tamas, which ma was made into a terrible serial and later a film by Govind Nihalini. But his writing spanned a much bigger canvas. Krishna Sopti, often called the grand dame of Hindi literature, referred to Bhishma Sahani as the Bhishma Pitamaha of literary and cultural life. He was not just a writer and actor, but was also a deeply sensitive and politically aware artist who used his creative faculties to highlight issues that were of concern to the common people. To discuss his life, time and works, I am joined by an extremely distinguished panel today. My first guest on this program is a well-known face, M.K. Raina, theatre personality, film personality who probably does not require any introduction, but who, purely because of his of theatrical interpretation of Bhishma Sahani's works, you know, merits a very unique position here. Kalpana Sahani, well-known uh, literary and uh, you know, a scholar of literature, also the daughter of. Uh, uh, Bhishma Sahani and uh, at some point uh, been a teacher of a very errant student that is me. Kuldeep Kumar, well known journalist, again a fairly accomplished commentator on uh, culture and uh, literary affairs. Kuldeep, let me begin with you because you are also a student of literature you know, way back in college almost more than 30 years ago. Within the large body frame of Hindi literature. You know, if one says that, where do you locate uh, Bhishma Sahani? You know, how would you actually begin this conversation? No, as you rightly said in your introduction, uh, Bhishma Ji was a very committed writer, True. and uh, his uh, over uh, included uh, plays, short stories, and novels. Right. And uh, he excelled in all the these three. Right. No, his short story uh, called Chief Ki Dawat, I mean, it acquired a kind of iconic status soon after it was published, I think 40 years ago, maybe more right. than uh, that. Similarly, his uh, novel to which you referred, Thomas. Thomas, it also, the moment it was published, very soon mm -hmm. it became very popular as a novel on the partition. Right. I mean, we have a tradition of novels a on huge partition. Uh, partition literature is in yes. fact a very rich tradition uh, in India. Uh, in Hindi, we have novels like uh, Yashpal's Jhuta Sach, then uh, Rai Masum Raja's yes. uh, Adha Gaon, mm. and then Vishamji's Tamas. Mm. But these, all these three novels, they are different the way they treat uh, the, this uh, cataclysmic event mm. called uh, the partition. Mm. And uh, his no, his plays also became very popular, like Kabira Khada Bazar Me and uh, you know. Kabira has revived it after several years. Uh, yes. Two and, so two and a half so that that way, uh, and what uh, uh, distinguishes him most, I think, is that hmm. he is never loud in his uh, work. Subtlety was his. Very subtle, uh, I would say, a master of understatement. Okay. And even his uh, like Chief Ki Dawat, mm. I mean, it's a uh, such a sensitively written short story, and uh, which uh, brings out the uh, tragedy of being a middle class, you know, man who has to somehow succeed, please his boss, and uh, so he uh, uses his mother in the sense that uh, whatever his mother can, you know, uh, make. 
he uses that to please his. so all that you know the tragic aspect but it is never loud mm -hmm. similarly his novel tamas right which could have been very loud right. but it, it's not very loud so that way he is a very <coughs> uh, special uh, writer i would say uh, in uh, uh, hindi literature right kalpana sani one of the points which kuldeep kumar has stressed very you know that the subtlety of bishum sani's writing and the fact that there was no loudness now they possibly cannot be anybody better than you to have known the personality and also the writer to see also the writing in the making now the, the basically the the softness the subtleness and the, the absence of any kind of literary loudness you know is it was it largely a part of his overall personality you know drawing from your memories you know uh, the earliest memories till the last days you, know. you see the thing is that i he had seen a lot experienced mm -hmm. a lot in life you know he was not just a mute spectator let's say of communal riots right. he was actually in the relief camps right this is immediately after partition no 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 the, uh, the, uh, these riots took place in Jan march 1947 That was, Rawal Rawal Pindi. Pindi. that was a raw pin that was a raw pin exactly that finally the thomas is located exactly yeah. finally it goes into that no but he also been a congress worker earlier right and he was always in the thick of it uh participated in the quit india yes. movement so what happens is that he could have become a very bitter person mm -hmm. he didn't there's a lot of compassion in him mm -hmm. as a human being and as a writer because he does not stand on judgment mm -hmm. you know you just said uh, it's soft it's soft. he doesn't stand on judgment he just puts a mirror in front of his characters mm -hmm. and say okay this this is what you are in a particular situation mm -hmm. and this is how you're acting maybe you've forgotten humanity or humaneness mm -hmm. at this point true and yet at the same time as you've just said that in a very nice way he sort of uh, uh, he he's not preaching to anybody we ourselves draw our conclusions you know like a story like <coughs> pali for instance it's a beautiful story he's not sitting on judgment mm. again pali is something i want yeah, to no? actually you know okay. you know because of a very contemporary flavor to pali which we suddenly get because of a popular uh, hindi cinema i'll want to talk about a bit later in the program but let me bring in mk rayana on this program being a theater person you know somebody who's also uh, revived this year uh, kavita khada bazar mein uh, one of the most iconic uh, theater productions which you have been also involved with uh, being the director currently or also rehearsing and just barely been able to take time to come and participate in this discussion you know as a theater person as also a person who's been involved with cinema you know given the fact that bishum sani did write plays was also involved with cinema you know and was a good, was a fairly proficient actor you know how do you uh, get drawn to uh, bishum sani what are the most remarkable things that you find about his writing his politics and his style of writing see i read bishum sani's short stories I, in fact i did first two television short stories right chief ki daawat and mata bhi mata right for doodles that was in the 80s 80s yeah. yeah then kabira came after that came uh, madhavi after that came mawse then right. came um, uh, hanush kim right, between hanush. but hanush was done before by rajendranath right but my fascination for pgm ji is first is how he puts and he, you know puts the seeds of politics with utter humanism right and it's amazing to see how what do you mean by saying you know, put the seeds of politics because he's a political writer to right. me but at the same time he's not an agit prop he's not he's, a he's not he's not Uh, projecting a party line no no no, no. he's not he, but he's his, talking the politics of times larger politics politics of times what right. is happening if it is kabira he's talking politics politics of today what is happening right. around in the country with caste problems and religious problems and other mm -hmm. religious intolerance and other things and but that he, that becomes a continuing theme you know it becomes you know you can you will say that do kabira is not written today it is written sometime in the past but it has intense contemporary uh, relevance it, it, very much very big so that is the success of a, of a that's why right, it is you know we did when we did this play first we did for continuously for 10 years right in the place never seen 10 years yeah. being there were thousands yeah. and thousands of people running across the country but what was a great about this writer was his humility 
Right. And I will tell you my few experience when I will talk to him about hmm. certain things. Yeah. And if I say them, you would have you, had why a long you do this? Given the fact you, for example, in Kabira there were no songs. So I was very intrigued. He was a great big writer. I didn't have courage to tell him what is the reason. But finally I had, had a situation and I asked him, tell me the reason. Why didn't you put more poetry in it? He said, Yaar, he used to always say, Yaar, Yaar, I don't know how to do it. I said, what do you mean? Do you music kar sakte hum? He said, yes, you can do it. So, what so he allowed you to yes, make yes, changes yes. into the text? and Not only that, he will, two things about Bishamji is wonderful. He, whether he accepted my productions or not, he will always publish his version. That will be published version. Mm -hmm. So when you see Kabir of mine or you see Mao Zephan, there is a lot of what Which I Which is did. slightly different from what is the Different, it is version. not different. Because you see what we do, we create images, they write words. Right. We transfer those words into three dimensional mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe certain things he will not do. But I think the he is so good at the writing is that he leaves it to the directors. As a play, any director will come, this is my text. Mm -hmm. Now you deal it the way you want to deal with it. That okay. is the beauty. But I like his arguments and dialogues, the way he weaves you know, the, the, those dialogues. Mm -hmm. For example, in Kabira's last scene, if you see the confrontation with Sikandar Lodi and Kabir, he says, Fakir, you do a job, why do you do a fakir? He says, John Fakir, you talk about it, it's a job for him. He says, I don't have a fakir, I don't have a job. You know, those arguments which will make you feel that this is the story of every human being. He's not, and he's showing the greatness of humanity in so every human very, character. Very profound you know, thoughts and ideas being communicated in a very simple style and language. Yes, that, that was, was possibly one of the his strengths that his he could be understood by anybody. For example, I remember Kabira Khada Bazar show in Rampur, we did for 30,000 people. Pin drops. In Rampur, uh, the city in Uttar yeah, Pradesh. Yeah, yeah. Th at 4 in the morning. And uh, after, in between the backstage side, you Does see India of today also have a similar kind of a draw as far as theatre is concerned, or because of technology, because of the invasion of culture through television? Has no, it, has a lot I think it depends on the subject and the performance. Mm -hmm. I, I believe performances have a power. Mm -hmm. to yeah, even people. now, when you did Kabira. Look at the queue outside the hall. Two, three hundred people to go back. And young people, back. they couldn't they come in. They could go back. They couldn't come in. Yeah. I think it's the power of the performance and power of the text. You see, we can't do anything on our own magic unless and until I have the. Text. I think that's the beauty. You know that we, you cannot do anything on your own until and unless you have a good text yes, to base your own yes. thing. We'll take a little break at this time, then come back and resume this conversation. Bisham Sani's importance in Indian culture can be gauged by the fact that even this government is observing his birth centenary year. He has been given this honor along with other iconic Indians of the past despite the fact that Bhishma Sani was politically opposed to the ruling party. Stay tuned in. We shall be back shortly. Welcome back to a page from history. We are celebrating the birth centenary of India's towering literary personality Bhishma Sani. Uh, Kalpana Sani, we were talking about Rawal Pindi, March 1947, the rise which eventually became the setting of Tamas. From what we have been able to read, what uh, Bhishamji also wrote, it was the 1971 Bhivandi riots where he went along with uh, Balraji and a few other friends from who were active at that point in Bombay cinema is what sparked the memories and revived the memories and then that's how he started Tamas. You know, I, we would like to listen about a bit about the, the, the story of the writing of Tamas because because of the very powerful tele-serial, it has kind of become a kind of a signature of Bhishma Sani. But as I told you that, yes. you know, the riots took place in March, but as a child also he had experienced riots. Right. And he had, in Rawalpindi itself. And as a child, even before 47? Yes, 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 okay. yes, because they were orchestrated. The, the moment uh, the freedom struggle began really, or took off, mm -hmm. the riots were instigated. So, you know... This is what, in the mid-twenties or thirties? No, he would have been in his... Look, when he was a child, they, uh, they, had, gone to a, they had gone to a fair and uh, his clothes were taken off and thrown into the bonfire. Okay. 
so that was already your Rowlett Act Cup tha. You know, so it was pretty early. Yeah, yeah. It was a pretty early thing. And, uh, and because then he'd been in the relief committees and you know worked with the refugees and what all happened, and then he was with doing this work even after partition in Punjab. Mm. Somewhere it must have lain very deep inside him. Mm. Because just the other day I came across his in diary. I came across years, his diary. In your growing up years, how much of partition trauma was there in no, his no, memory? No. Uh, they no. never gave the. Uh, there was no trauma in okay. our household. Okay, but in we had nothing. But it was stories? a lovely family. Okay. Uh, at no stories yes? being talked about. No. Why should they tell us stories of uh, partition? Uh, no, no, the horror. Okay. The horror. We were children. We were tiny. But we were, you know, one day we were in Bombay, one day we were somewhere else. We were, you know, living in people's houses or all over the Punjab. And, but when he, huh, so as I was saying, I just now came across his diary of that period, 1947. And he is describing what is happening on the streets of Rawalpindi. And the last sentence is that the kites will fly. And that later on, many mm. years later, I guess what did happen was that when he and Balraji went to Bhivandi mm. and saw what had happened, it just all came back. Mm. And my brother tells me, because I was no longer living with them, I had right. already got married. Uh, my brother tells me that uh, he just returned from Bombay, sat down to write. He didn't know whether there was a fan on or anything. He just wrote non-stop, non-stop. And it was over within a few, couple of weeks. Mm. Because people ask, you know, how come people have waited so long to write? How could he write? But, you know, with a writer, you can't tell. He'd been writing stories about partition before that. Mm. It just so happened. And it's a very interesting thing because he writes, uh, and even in his some of his talks, he says, he said, I've never encountered either a pig being killed, hmm. nor was there this a character, basic, yeah. nor basic was there a character. Thomas. Exactly. He says, hmm. he was the only fantasized character, Nathu, hmm. in the novel. All the others were people that I'd worked with and I'd known them. Hmm. And they were all very dedicated people, you know, who were just working with no uh, axe to grind. It was just for the country. Hmm. The interesting thing is that, you know, it has nothing to do with this, but uh, for his other novel, which we think is a much greater novel, Mayadas Ki Mari, mm. everything is imaginary. <laughs> everything, there's not a single character. So it's interesting how a ca uh, writer, you know, uh, writes or creates. In this particular right. case, something triggered it. Right. Yeah. Kuldeep, uh, you know, the partition stories is, is a very important genre of Indian literature. It's been particularly rich on the western side than, than the eastern side. Uh, there are reasons for the eastern side being largely devoid of partition stories. But within the western side, you know, there's a huge body. And if people were writing in different languages, you, you talked about. There's also Kushwan Singh's Train to Pakistan. Uh, uh, Bhishm Sani's uh, Amritsar, Amritsar Aa Gaya. Yeah. Now, there's one thing which we find, you know, that the partition stories is that that while Manto specialized in the macabre, uh, can one say that uh, Bhishm Sahani was noted for the humane side, for the the, the, the human trauma, and also uh, use of much larger metaphors. The train, for instance, you know, does become a very recurring metaphor, not just for Bhishm Sahani, but for various other writers also, to be able to to, to symbolize, you know, you know, being uprooted from one place to another place. The train as the carrier of a certain existence from one place to another. You know, within the entire body of partition stories, you know, where do you place the kind of stories which uh, Bhishamji was writing? No, as I said earlier, uh, Bhishamji was never loud. Hmm. So he treated even this subject, which is, which is a very uh, horror-filled subject of partition, uh, in a very, as you said, very humane uh, way, mm. in a very subtle manner, bringing out people's 
humanity you know uh, because even in those circumstances uh, he could see people reacting in a very humane uh, you know manner so his the way he treated the subject was not to offer you graphic descriptions of uh, what uh, you know happened you know those all those horrors but bringing out the human essence of uh, those situations mm -hmm. so in in that sense tamas is a very unique uh, novel mm -hmm. uh, because if you read abdullah husain's i mean that novel leaves you totally shaken shaken up uh, this udas nasle mm -hmm. but tamas does not jhinjolta nahi hai but it uh, gives you the essence of the uh, you know situation right and what happened what people went through mm. what were their experience and how they came out of it because mm. uh, you know uh, people who went from this side or came from that side mm. ultimately they moved on right and uh, uh, you know they did things in their in their lives they did not uh, sit and mourn you know over the past mm. so Uh, and uh, i remember in in his autobiography he uh, he tells us that when he was shooting for uh, tamas hmm. uh, his wife met a woman who was one of the extras part right. of the crowd hmm. and that crowd was the crowd of refugees and uh, he saw that uh, his wife was talking to this woman unknown yes. woman for and he did not know who she was and no. so when she came he said kisse baat kar rahe hain she said this woman she said i am a real refugee i am not acting but i am a refugee even after so many years i remain a refugee because hmm. my husband uh, he he is invalid and i have to earn so i don't have a home i i am still a refugee after so many years and acting as an extra is possibly a way of yes. uh, of making uh, earn some, some earning some money earning some money mk ran a partition literature theater cinema you know large number of, there's been a huge body of work also people consider garam hawa for instance probably one of the finest uh, you know interpretations in cinema of a literary work tamas of course is there but if we actually talk in terms of uh, you know partition being expressed through cinema you know it takes a long time almost 15 years before in the in the uh, early 60s they do start having some kind of reflection of partition in uh, you know what is it you know that in culture though writers were writing short stories novels on partition yet it was not being taken forward in other areas of performing arts or other uh, work uh, art areas even in cinema also now i don't say that if you see dharmputra was made long back yes Waktu also starts, but the sixties. Well, sixties, but I think Mantu was fifties. Yes, and he was very harsh. You know, he was brutal. I think the degree where Mantu leaves partition, Bishamji builds it in a different way. Mm -hmm. He builds the human side of it. Where when you see that Mantu left people just the reader just shocked. Shocked, you know, naked before yeah. you. and here is the man who believes in humanity he believes in the hope he believes in that there is in human souls that they can you know recapture their lives back they can rebuild their the nation has to rebuild with these all responsibilities his characters become very rounded very three dimensional very life like and that's where he goes one step further where Man mantu might have adapted mm -hmm. and then the, the, i still think after thomas we still need to reflect on partition we have not really done great 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 work on partition partition is a huge chapter which is re recurring many times politically into our lives we have not resolved this whole sin call it or a wound it has not been healed and i see the dangers of it also if it needs to be resolved kapna do you also think that you know we have not here been able to resolve partition as uh, mk is saying through the uh, literary works no you see if you look at it that boundaries per se mm -hmm. are sort of imaginary lines which rulers think are permanent mm -hmm. and they divide families they divide cultures they divide you know it's a wound that <laughs> you keep on m making wounds after wounds i mean we are today also in that very situation right where 
we have, I think huh. we have not learned from partition. We have not learned to move, move in the right direction from the partition. There are little, little tiny partitions happening every year, I see. Every in year, the every month. You have, you have them happening all over the, the country, you know. There are various kinds of uh, you know, social violence. Therefore, Bishinji's works and celebration today is all the more reason to reflect intellectually to reflect artistically and communicate with it. I would have but said... But all his work was not just only about partition. There was yes, much more was beyond not. that. You know, he, we should but not also about see Vishim Thani only as you a see, partition no. expert. No, no. Also displacement. Uh, you know, uprooted people. Take ba Basanti, for example. Right. The, the novel Basanti right. is there. For. So he and is I concerned just, about this underdog, un the ordinary man. Right. And his character is not your big, big heroes. And they are ordinary human beings. Like Brett. Right, yeah. They are from the you know lower strata of the society. These people, right, and he right. sees in each one of them the great human uh, endeavor, human power in that. Can I'll I take a little. I, I'll take a little break, Kalpana, at okay. this point. Then come okay. back to you. Uh, when Vishum Sani died in July 2003, Kamleshwar, also a well-known Hindi writer, said that Vishumji was both the inheritor and caretaker of the Hindi tradition begin, begun by Amir Khusro in the 13th century. Vishum Sani, in fact, succeeded in conveying the most complex of thoughts using the simplest of words. Be with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to a page from history. This is the birth centenary year of Bhishum Sani, the noted writer, actor, and cultural personality. Uh, Kalpana Sani, if one you know, tries to s find some aspect of Bhishum Sani's writing in today's contemporary literary cinematic world, very popular recent film, from Bombay, uh, Bajrangi Bhaijan. Uh, Vishumji's work Pali, you know, tells the story of a young child who gets left behind in Pakistan during partition, brought up as a Muslim by a Pakistani family, then the father reaches from here, child is brought here, there is some kind of a dislocation. More than 75 years later, you know, a, you know, a completely different, uh, tra you know, transition, you know, situation is there. You have a child who comes from Pakistan with her family, not on any traumatic visit, but basically to go to a shrine, gets left behind by a very careless error that happens from the side of the family. And the girl stays back when, you know, eventually lands up in a Hindu family here. The protagonist of the film decides to take it as a personal, personal heroic mission to take the girl and deliver the girl to the family there, much against the red tape which exists in both countries, which is issuing a passport, issuing a visa, so it becomes a very clandestine route. It the story that there is a larger story of human dislocation, artificial boundaries, which continues to haunt the subcontinent. So that has become, whether we like it or not, you know, what M. K. Raina was saying, that is yes, partition we have not been able to resolve. We really probably cannot resolve, but we can probably keep on interpreting it in different ways at different times. A novel or a, or a film which is set in the time of partition has to be different from the agony and trauma of that particular time. In a way, would you say that it is good that these themes are also making it to a very popular genre? and in some way or the other touching the chord of the people at becoming a rage, not just in India, but also in Pakistan. Well, you know, if one looks at uh, life around us, you know, who are the Pakistanis or the Bangladeshis? Yeah. It's a composite culture that's part of the subcontinent, True. isn't it? I mean, these are these artificial boundaries that have come about. True. So divisive uh, policies where you divide one against the other in order to rule mm. is what creates all the problems because mm. if you go to Pakistan there is so much of affection of people towards you right. there is you s feel so wonderful listening to the Punjabi out there I mean mm. maybe someone from you know Hyderabad would not understand that a Punjabi who has initially come away from that part of Punjab our Punjabi is still there, no? The right. Punjabi that we speak at home. Right. So, yes, these are all artificial uh, boundaries that people invoke. And, and it will still be, it will take several generations more before these boundaries 
disappear you know from no. public memory or will they never disappear no you see the thing is in our homes on tv in our educational systems if we keep on and on talking about the divisiveness hmm. and you know uh, bring about this thing of the enemy per se hmm. it's, it's never going to get solved because in uh, future generations have been not been bought up you see we where, where, where uh, people you know writers theater personalities cinema makers filmmakers have a role to play in society no because you see amongst the ordinary people they live together there is still the composite yeah. culture that's there you know they are much more there is a much healthier in fact right. approach to life yeah i you think uh, if south asia has to have a future as kalpana says that we have common cultural links hmm. there's no other way give chance to the culture back this is a glue between the live wires of which are sparkling all the time mm. and i think soon or the better the states of all the south asian countries wake up to the idea that our future lies together we may be entities different no no it cannot be possibly politically we cannot be part of one nation no, I'm but not yes, asking, no 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 but it is the animosity the, the please let us be like in the, yeah. let these borders melt hatred borders melt somewhere there is no other way i don't see any other way that i keep missiles and the nukes on my border and then i'll be peaceful i will be not be able to sleep we have seen it in europe mm. finally it dawned on to them that break the walls right and we need to break the walls and all these violent <coughs> manifestations that are happening in terms of terrorism this they will this because the majority of the south asia i i work in south asia i work in bangladesh i work in nepal pakistan and what's kind of a response do you get Absolutely. when you Absolutely. when you Absolutely. Go i feel like home honest i'm not telling just for the propaganda the television i don't see any difference i don't see any difference I the audience which comes to you you find I, them relating example, to you just the way in, oh, i did a play in lahore it had yeah. 900 people in uh, alhumra auditorium and there were 1000 women outside shouting that we have to see this play it was about a woman and then they said this play is about women how dare you don't show us mm. we had to open the doors sit anywhere and you like some got got on the stage and you should see the standing ovations they give the kind of affection they give you mm. and i think we need to open up our hearts to be honest to tell you we don't welcome unless and i know individually in the streets they welcome you in the shops they welcome you this specially coca cola law mehman aaye hain ye oh policeman caught me janab ab ye khatam hona chahiye lahore ke i went to see balrajis college hmm. and sunny said show me this photo the saab ye khatam hona chahiye mujhe bhaiya tum khush raho hum khush rahe aana jana to rahe i think this is future is in that and the world's future is in that right. and we theater people culture people film people literary people have a biggest role to help our diplomacy help our so leaders so to right. educate to see this future well yes i we hope that you know culture can definitely be uh, you know act like the adhesive like one of the adhesive uh, advertisements which keep on coming and probably you have been part of that as <laughs> <the> adhesive <laughs> <laughs> campaign kuldeep kumar uh, you know you know when we talk about bisham sahani we cannot but talk about the other hyphenated sahani which is you know it was always so much a part of you know bishum sahani balraj sahani i was reading somebody who said that we remember this but brilliant convocation lecture yes you know till the time when mm. there used to be convocation yeah, yeah. yeah, at the university yeah. that One we went to but the gentleman forgot that which of the brothers actually delivered that lecture yeah. because it was yes i was reading a piece and uh, i think it was by uh, balraj ji ashok mitra uh, oh. the the former bengal uh, ah, the finance, uh, finance minister. minister who said that i have forgotten i was just reading mm. an article of his that i have forgotten that which of the sahani yeah. brothers presented this lecture but i am not so much interested in the lecture per se uh, of course it was remarkably lucid and very uh, you know politically sharp but the point is that the response of the students and the way they reacted and the, the kind of questions that were put after afterwards that you know very interactive session no no not so really basically right first it, they opposed balraj ji to come there yeah. no the yes, students did not want they, him to at come that, at that time is. that was in 19 i think 72 72 just uh, they, just around the time when you were possibly uh, uh, just coming here the year before year i before. joined the university yeah. there was a big hue and cry created by elements outside the university they in within the university there was no opposition everybody was happy 
and Balrasa. I am sorry, Kuldeep, it was within the university. It was within the university. Group of the political... Why are you calling an actor? <laughs> Look, maybe a few, but the, the main opposition came from groups outside who said that uh, in a convocation, an actor should not be called right. some somebody who is a big anyway, you know, whatever, anyway, whatever but be the, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at. His yeah, convocation address get, yes. focused on... He silenced everybody, I think. Hmm? When he delivered the lecture, hmm. there was pin drop So silence. what I'm getting at is that there was this unique relationship between the two brothers, you know, which they kind of complimented each other all the time. So much so that eventually, uh, you know, sure. Bishamji did write a book on his brother, on Balraj, my, my brother. You know, how do you look at this relationship, a very uh, a, a tremendous creative partnership? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, and standing Sani, for virtually the same kind of politics. I think Kalp, Kalpna maybe can. Uh, uh, I, you know, an outsider's uh, view, then we'll get an insider's but view. But uh, what one gets from reading, yeah. uh, because firstly, you know, there because was there was not about. a big age difference between the no, two. Just just, just two years. Maybe? Just uh, less than two years. In yes. fact, in his autobiography, Vishamji says that. His mother said it was only one year, 11 months, and his father had entered some other date, uh, 8th of August, 1915, uh, in the, when, he so took, when he took him to So that school. is why we are recording uh, this episode <laughs> uh, this yes, year and not yes. last year, because so, of an error so made they were by not much, the but, father. But uh, from his writings, one, right. one can see that he had a lot of, not only great affection, but a lot of respect also, right. which... Uh, an elder brother, you know, commands, but mm. Balraj Sani was not much elder to him, uh, he just uh, less than two years. Right. And they had a very, un I mean, even though uh, it, it looks that when they were children, they used to mm. fight with each other and Balraj Sani used to, I mean, like any elder right. brother, dominate. And But uh, he had genuine affection and right. respect i mean apart from affection genuine respect right. for for him and yeah, uh, even though i have a story, though, to, tell you. Have a story to tell you you know vishim uh, used to give his manuscripts to me to read mm -hmm. I, then i will come and discuss or whatever then i may do the place right. once i used to ask him you break this realistic form you're all the time like realistic vishim is changing the times have changed he said kaise yaar pata hi nahi then suddenly i get a call from Kalpana, I think you called me, Gharaja, come home. Vishim is going to read a new play. Mm. Mm. And we went to their house, there were four or five of us. Cameraman Sani was there, um, Romi was there, husband, me and my wife. Mm. And the suddenly Vishim Ji read says Punjabi play, mm. called Mavze. And we fell, you know, you can't imagine, we were laughing, I was on the floor all, all the time. I said, Vishim Ji, how did you do it? He said, yeah, Balraj Mishri bought bar ke tae, toh Punjabi vich lik rai, yaar. Punjabi mein lik rai, yaar, because he also did right. Mein ne bas lik diya ye. Ab beta, toh bhi kaira tha ki, mujhe real estate kar le ab. But unfortunate for the nation today is that I have done it in Hindi because we didn't have a company of Punjabi actors that time. Right. No, but you are talking of the convocation address. In that address, Balraj Sani says that when he was at Shantini Ketan, Hmm. He had started publishing his short story. He was a writer also. Yes. And he said he that Ravindranath Tagore used to, in fact, chide him that you are a Punjabi. Why don't you write? Why Punjabi? don't you write in Punjabi? Yeah. Why are you writing in Hindi? That is not your language. I write in bang Bangla. I don't write in English or Hindi or any other uh, language. So you should write in your own language. So I think. Th that uh, connects yeah, yeah. Uh, because Balraji started learning Punjabi typewriting also. He had used to carry his typewriter all the time for his shootings, mm -hmm. and I think that play is a tribute to. But unfortunately, we have not yet done that in Punjabi. Yeah. That is the tragedy. Okay. Well, sir, we'll we'll take another break at this point, and then come back for the next segment of this uh, episode. Vishamsani was born in Rawalpindi a hundred years ago, when Punjab of that period was the perfect home for composite culture. To a great extent, this provided the backdrop to his own worldview. Stay with us. We'll be back soon. We are talking about Bhishma Sani and his birth centenary year. Kalpana Sani, before we went in for a break, we are talking about this remarkable creative and personal partnership between the two brothers. You know, as you know, as somebody uh, you know who would have seen it possibly from a very close quarter. Can you just try to explain as to how they kind of complemented each other personally as well as in their creative pursuits? Well, they grew up 
both of them grew up in a very sort of charged atmosphere right. at home. You know, I'll just read out what my father writes. He says, there was much greater tolerance and goodwill and we lived in a more relaxed atmosphere. Mm. My father was a devout Arya Samajist, right. great votary of Hindi and Sanskrit, yet he did all his correspondence in Urdu. Huh? That was a typical composite exactly. culture of you. His letters funny. even to his sons were written in Urdu. At home we received a weekly newspaper called Arya Gazette which used to be full of exhortations for the study of Hindi and Sanskrit but the paper was printed in the Urdu language. Did your father use the, the Devanagari script or did he no. use the... For what? For, for, for his writings. Devanagari? Yes. Yes, yes. So Urdu. No, ah, no, 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 no. Urdu he wrote in no, Urdu. Yeah, this is what I heard, you know, that no, no, that, that, no, no, no. that he, he the, the writing, the script was the Urdu script. Uh, everybody in fact, knew the script those days. No. You see, They've for seen instance, Mr. I, ha use, uh, I have a big uh, problem, for instance. Yeah. You see, now I'm doing, uh, going through his work hmm. and I have a question to myself. The brothers, when they didn't want anyone to understand, communicated with each other in Urdu. Should I learn Urdu, the mm -hmm. script or not? You see, it's their privacy, no? So what I'm trying to say, my mother used to use uh, no, Gurmukhi script. No, but that's a literary historian of the future. You should no, learn. No, maybe Urdu. my uh, grandchildren would. <laughs> no, it's no, better. I think, I'm I think, close, I think, no? I think you, should, you should do it. Because no, uh, but you, see, know, you can bring in your interpretation drawn from your memories of the time when that may have I been would. written. Perhaps I would. But no, but I found another very interesting thing that when I was getting my father's works published, mm -hmm. including Alamgir and... Uh, I discovered that all the publishing houses have done away with the nukhta, yes, that's that little is. dot. Yeah. Now, and when I asked them, they said, is is a foreign word hota hai? So I said, by removing it, are you making everyone a Bihari? Mm -hmm. You know, ki jarurat ho gai hai aur jo, uh, So just look how we have started thinking about these beautiful Persian words, Central Asian, Turkic words. Mm -hmm. hmm? uh, his father studied, used to uh, read Saadi in Persian. Mm -hmm. Now, learning all this, so what he's saying is, this is Bhishamji's words, mm -hmm. while we conversed in our mother tongue Punjabi, a Pandit ji would come and teach us Hindi and Sanskrit at home. At school, the medium of instruction was Urdu and in higher classes, English. A person whose younger days have been set, spent in close association with a number of languages cannot but help develop a close liking for each one of them. Mm. You see, it is inevitable. Most of us Indians live in a multilingual atmosphere and I feel quite comfortable using a number of languages and dialects. And he I taught think. in English. And he no, was... He taught English literature. He was, exactly. Yeah. He, 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 he so what was you he? Know, he's a big, right. big doyen of uh, like Hindi exactly. literature and he used to uh, exactly. teach English literature. <coughs> <coughs> so what is he? Is he Bhishma, as the Punjabi would call him? Or, or is he Bhishma? As Bhishma. Hmm. So we have all got multiple identities. Hmm. And he retained those because he huh? spelled his name in English as Bhishma, huh? in Hindi as Bhishma. Bhishma. Hmm. And initially so because the British this, couldn't this pronounce their name, it they used to write Sony. thing that you are pointing out, you know. Yeah. That is, uh, so he retained both. The, the, the retained both and you know the name. Yeah. Yeah. So he says language by its very nature is a medium that brings people closer together. Right. You know, it plays a unifying role. It removes psychological barriers. But the moment we start sort of equating a language with a religion, then we've, we've lost it. We've problem. lost it's it. Purity of religion. You know, we've lost the plot. You know, we have been talking about Kuldeep, we have been talking about Bhishmji and writing of his own partition. What about other themes? You know, there, there's a huge body of work that he's done. Which are the other things that you find, you know, his, the themes that he, that he particularly, f you would think that he particularly liked writing about? No, uh, what comes across? One of the know? things is like this uh, play, uh, Kabira Kala Bazaar, mein, which which is, as you s rightly said, is, it's, it's a contemporary play, yes. although the main character protagonist is uh, for, Kabir, for, for several years but it's a contemporary play. Uh, in uh, in the same way, if you look at Hanush, even though it is on uh, this uh, Czech Czech clockmaker, but 
इट्स ए काइंड ऑफ ए आई थिंक वॉट भीषम जी इज ट्राइंग टू डू लाइक ए गुड कमिटेड राइटर ही इज ट्राइंग टू रियली ब्रिंग आउट दी डिग्निटी ऑफ लेबर यू नो दैट्स हाउ आई क्रिएटिव 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 वर्क एनी काइंड ऑफ क्रिएटिव वर्क वेदर यू आर ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट ए क्लॉक और यू आर ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट ए पोएम और ए शॉर्ट स्टोरी और बट एनी क्रिएटिव एंडेवर दैट दैट्स वॉट ही इज ट्राइंग टू यू नो सेलिब्रेट सो भीषम जी इज यू नो दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स विद एवरी ग्रेट राइटर समटाइम्स इट बिकम्स यू नो ए ट्रेजिक दैट वन वर्क stands out and everybody talks about his his one work and all other important works they are overshadowed by if if it so had, that is what happened with bisham ji tamas now tam, everybody yeah. talks if of tamas if it had not been for the fact so, that in 1986 the rajiv gandhi government to be to able to change its image after the 1984 anti sikh violence decided to open liberalize television allow things to be shown and show that we as a nation had the confidence to show the violence that had been inflicted by people on each other had that not happened had govind nihalani not decided to make a film which ran for 6 or 7 uh, you know episodes on doordarshan had it not become such a big thing at a time when there was a sheer poverty of the kind of uh, you know cinema or the kind of visual uh, you know entertainment forms which it, when it was made so it would have not probably become his signature it would have been a you know a novel maybe uh, been part of another play become very iconic in nature so mkran how do you look at the non partition the non uh, communal themes that uh, i think you know story? always you will see bishim ji is there's a state and there are the actors of the state right always you'll see him whether it is take hanush there's a state mm -hmm. and the confrontation of the ordinary against the state mm -hmm. and almost you know state losing because mm. of the so you know, that's how his politics comes come, comes up. you take for example the contemporary theme which he has taken in mawze yes. there is a so called riot has they will be giving compensation right. to right compensation has to be given for but a but there is no riot but it is gets announced a riot so get compensation below huh. and how he turns it upside down and explore the entire system and the mess in the entire system and the state which is represented but this the ordinary actors you, you always see these ordinary people in the there are slum people in it mm. the in in you have dalits in kabira khada bazar mein mm. you have hanush again an ordinary person or if you go now to the play which has not been talked about it madhvi. is alamgir madhvi 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 in the madhvi there is yayati the state uh -huh. and it is about the woman and her rights and how she has been exploited for the man's dream mm. for the man's ambition in again it is a mahabharat story basically mm. but how he turns it up you know turns around and makes it contemporary today i see always bishim ji has the state always he confronts the state with beautiful ways you know it's like a boat he takes around in different you know, to, you know canals and finally right. has to prove this point that look right. state has to finally lose the what is the you know what is the vision of so, the people so kalpana would you also agree with what mkr and i saying that eventually whatever he wrote no matter how he wrote his eventual target was that basically the state had to be unmasked because he possibly felt that the state was essentially protecting the interests of the western interests no this or, or is with the plays you know the plays it's yeah, the yeah. internal dilemma of a person and vis-a-vis -vis the state yes mm. in all the plays see mm. and in that it comes but uh, not necessarily in his short it's stories it's not so in the short stories no, short no, stories no, are no. Different. short stories is a very wide range yeah. and primarily again there it's ordinary middle class you know writing about everyday life yes, everyday every life ordinary. exactly he doesn't take sort of you know heroic uh, it's always there's a bit of satire in it there's a bit of uh, humor in it there's a bit of uh, you know um any particular story, short story i think his story any particular short story which comes to your mind you know for being a very remarkable or truly a, truly representative of vishnu sani with this monk oh vangju 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 i just Wangchu love that a, story yes. i just i want to do it for stage it's yes. good it's an amazing story but all the and chief ki daawat still remains my most favorite <laughs> story yeah. 
that is that is will have his own favorite story that is yes. yes no but pali is beautiful but I, I pali i mean you know you are going in the truck back to india with this little boy and this social worker takes his cap and throws it mm. there is no need for this yaad hai and oh you know so there are these little sort of touches that are very the little touches the little इंडिया फॉलो which will be good for india that will be contending ideas of india thank you very much it's been wonderful to have the three of you i've run out of time i could have thank continued the discussion for some more time it really become very lively and a very interesting and a very sensitively uh, you know inputs from all three of you thank you very much thank you, thank you. vishwam sani's birth centenary is being celebrated in various parts of india films and theater festivals are being organized in different cities Several popular cinema and theatre artists are also turning out on stage. Tamas has become a signature of Bhishma Sani, as we have been discussing in this program. But there is much more than that that he wrote in a writing career spanning five decades. Even as an actor, Bhishma Sani left his mark. Modern technology has made cinema, plays, and even interviews easily available on the internet, and there is nothing that stops you from reaching out to the creative world of Bhishma Sani, even if. centenary functions skip your town do take the initiative to watch and i'm sure you will not be disappointed do write to us and give us your feedback on this program our email id is historyalstv@gmail.com we will return next week and there will be another page from history and another panel of experts till then goodbye